at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Anaya to once again read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Thursday, January 14, 2021, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Ed Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Ed Harbor Township Clerk and posted on the Bolton Board of Township Hall. Advertised instructions for this hybrid meeting were posted on our website and on social media on Friday, May 7, 2021. Thank you. May we have roll call, please? Ms. Alabarda? Here. Mrs. Bird? Present. Mr. Delabarca? Here. Mr. Ireland? Here. Mr. Price? Mr. Price is here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Salagi? Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. And Mr. Castellano? Here. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to stand for the flag salute. Following the flag salute, we're going to remain standing for a moment of silence for Mr. Vincent Anel, uh, our paraprofessional who sadly passed away this week. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. So again, welcome to our May uh, work meeting as we head into May and June. It's always uh, an exciting time with uh, end of year activities. Um, as we know, this though is a year like no other. Uh, however, it seems as if uh, not only each week, but each day things get just a little bit better with this pandemic. We're back to school five days a week. Uh, and again, each and every day things get a little more like 100% back to normal. Uh, I'm very pleased to just highlight that not only um, a little while ago did we arrange for uh, vaccination for all of our staff uh, who needed it, but just this past week um, we're now arranging uh, vaccinations on site for our students who are who are eligible age 16 and above and very shortly that will be uh, starting at age 12 to 15 and we will also be arranging for vaccines on site uh, I think we all recognize uh, the quicker the more people can get vaccinated we can get us closer and closer to 100 percent back to normal something that we're all looking forward to very much. Uh, I want to make quick mention that um, uh, last week was Teacher Recognition Week. Um, and, but some of you may not know that last week was also Public Service Recognition Week, which recognizes all of our public employees, federal, state, and local. So I think combining those two weeks uh, I think I can say on behalf of all of us, board and administration, thank you to our teachers, our paras, our administrators, and all of our staff, no matter what particular role you play. Thank you for the fantastic job that you have done each and every day, and especially during this very, very difficult year. And I just feel like we are really turning the corner and we are just almost there. And a quick shout out, not to be forgotten, this week is Special Education Week. So a shout out to all of our special needs students and staff. Um, we appreciate you and we thank you very much. So with that, I will turn over to Dr. Ruccio for her reports. Good evening, everyone. Um, just real quick, I wanna go over um, an update on our uh, was called a COVID-19 update, but our five days of in-person uh, teaching and learning is going very, very well. Um, students and staff were back for five days, um, full day in the elementary level and the abbreviated day at the secondary level. Things were going very, very well. Um, we are seeing less COVID cases throughout the district, which is a great thing. As Mr. Castellano mentioned, um, we, we have been 
offering vaccine, vaccines for, for teachers, and that was through um, Walmart over on 322 here in EHT. We partnered with them. Um, just made a phone call um, to Atlantic Care and working with um, Ms. Karen Summit, supervisor of nurses, um, and we secured vaccines for students 16 years and older. Communication went out to parents just recently uh, about this opportunity. Hearing the news about the 12 years and older um, yes, just yesterday, um, made a phone call this morning and looking to expand um, the vaccine distribution. Um, but the response was they have to find out more information as to uh, when that will be available and how, how we will do that. But we've looked to combine that on the same date for all our students, staff as well. Okay, so the opportunity to be offered uh, to them. Um, our food distribution continues. There's been communications put out to our families to let them know um, about pickup and um, delivery. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put a put plug out here for the importance of our annual free and reduced lunch application. Communications have been going out and will be going out. Um, even though we are distributing free food, it's very, very important for uh, folks and families to fill out that free and redun reduced lunch application. And I really want to highlight the importance of doing so because it's advantageous to all. Um, for students, you get your the, um, EBD card. Uh, students and families, there will be reductions in fees and waivers. Um, also, that applies to applications for SATs and college, et cetera. And in the end, it also helps the district um, receive uh, funding. So it's important that um, you know, those applications are filled out. We'd appreciate that very much. All right, so that's my report um, regarding an update on the district, and I'm just going to scoot down to the floor, and um, if Mr. Santilli can assist me technology-wise, we have some more information for you. Okay, so welcome. Okay, welcome everyone this evening. It's funny, we all said, oh my gosh, people, it's great to see people. So, um, <laughs> welcome, thank you for joining us uh, for this work session. And normally in our work session, we don't have many presentations, but because between now and June 30th in our meeting schedule, we have um, a lot of public recognition um, that, that we will be doing. So, without further ado, um, I'd like to share some hashtag EHT pride with you. As a former coach, I stand up here so proud. Um, first, is to, to share with everyone that our athletic teams are doing exceptionally well uh, this year, particularly um, this spring. But when there are extra, extra highlights and achievements um, that are brought our way, uh, I stand here with pride to be able to share with you all the accomplishments of um, our wonderful student athletes. And as a for former student athlete and coach, um, it's, it's extra, it's extra stuff beyond uh, the academic day, uh, beyond responsibilities at home, it's being able to um, physically engage in your passion. And it's not only physical activity, but the heart and soul that goes into um, participating in extracurricular activities, whether it's athletics, um, fine and performing arts, um, whatever passion that a student has, but it's, it's extra. Um, so, so I really appreciate that. I know the time that goes into uh, training, dedication uh, to your team. So without further ado, it's my privilege and honor to um, highlight and recognize Ms. Nikki Dance, who is a senior at, um, at Egg Harbor Township High School. And I have Mr. Pellegrino, athletic director, who's going to join me up here. I have Coach Weish. I have Principal Connor uh, from the high school. Because um, Nikki, you can come on up here. Um, don't be shy. I know you're not. So Nikki is our girl soccer scoring record holder. All right. So her statistics are up there. And uh, Mr. Pellegrino, I'll hand over the mic to you so you can uh, present some of the awards this evening. Very nice. So uh, um, we have the, uh, the awards cases at the high school, and every time a student athlete breaks a record at the high school, we update and add additional things into the case. So uh, we were waiting. Our uh, normal art teacher was out this year on maternity leave, 
So we, we went to our backup, uh, Ms. Baumgartel's son, Brewster, um, who was able to get this done for us. So it says 2017 to 2020, which is what her seasons were uh, playing for the high school. Nikki Dance, 59 goals, all-time leading scorer. And then uh, I'm going to hand that to you. That will be going into the trophy case. And then... Oh, wrap it. Oh, wrap it up. Sorry. <laughs> I figured it was easy to refer. And as a memento for you, that way you can put this when you go to college next year at right right on your bed, right on right on your bed shelf so you can see it every single day at Montclair. All right? <laughs> Once again, we can dance our all-time leading tour for some. On behalf of the A. Carver Township School District, we received the Superintendent's Athletic Award tonight for high school girls of RC Soccer School and the record of, of scoring here. Um, you know, that, that will stand until it's been broken, but Nikki's put 59 of them in the net, so that's going to be tough. But we recognize you for breaking that school record and demonstrating your outstanding athletic ability and your talent in girls' soccer, and we wish you well in your future endeavors. I know um, we stand here as hashtag EHT pride, but you are going to make us hashtag EHT proud. So, um, again, on behalf of the superintendent's office and board of education, we want you to know that we appreciate your dedication um, and your performances this year. So thank you very much. Mom, Dad, you want a picture with, with Nikki? And thank you to you as well for driving her where she had to go and sitting in the stands and supporting her. Thank you. <laughs> Pick up. Mike. Mike, do it, do it under the slide. Do it that way. Okay, congratulations again, Nikki. Moving on to team now. Our Agover Township High School boys swimming team was the Atlantic City Press, or the Press of Atlantic City's team of the year. Um, they swam out a 10 and one uh, record in swimming. So excellent, excellent job. This is Coach uh, Jameson. He leads the boys team. Um, each and every year, he works with the little ones, and uh, all that work pays off. Um, Mr. Jameson, on behalf of Lake Harbor Township School District, and you see the Superintendent's Coaches Award for the Press of Atlantic City being honored as the High School Boys Swim Team of the Year. So we honor the coach as well in his efforts. And then, if you don't mind, if you could share these certificates with the boys. That would be wonderful. But again, we're very, very proud of our athletic teams. Very, very proud of the swimmers this year. As you know, a year of, um, you know, some weird stuff. But the swimmers got to get in the pool. They were one of the first sports that, that came back um, inside. And uh, they did a good job. So appreciate it. And we're very, very yeah. proud of you. In, in, in this, weird year, this was the first time ever we did an actual virtual swim meet between us and Middle Township. So uh, we swam in our pool, they swam in their pool, and then we compared the scores. Wow. Um, it was the first time ever for us. It went over very well. Um, it might be the wave of the future. You never know. All right? Congrats. Wave. Dad Dad joke. Dad joke. Okay, and here we go. Press of Atlantic City 
uh, Coach of the Year, NewJersey.com, Coach of the Year, South Jersey Sports Zone, Coach of the Year, and the coach of the North Division Public Champions, the Egg Harbor Township High School Boys Basketball Team went 14-1. Cameron, I want to tell you, and I know I've told you before, I'm so proud of you, um, the time and efforts that you put in um, building the, the team, um, putting that team together, and working hard during the season, outside of the season. Um, you know, everyone recognized your efforts. So you should be very, very proud. We're very proud of you. We're very proud that you represent us. And with that said, on behalf of the Edgar Times of School District, you are a recipient of the Superintendent's uh, Coaches Award for all the wonderful things that you and your team accomplished this year. Um, and I appreciate uh, the hard work and the dedication and the passion and love that this man has for Egg Harbor Township. Yep. Egg <laughs> <laughs> Harbor Township a high school graduate and he, you know, he, he's given back to, to his love. So uh, we love you and congratulations and keep it going, all right? Good job. <laughs> I don't know, it was a, um, a great year for the, the boys' basketball program, but uh, during the year, we also had a student athlete, Carlos Lopez, broke the 1,000-point mark this year. We'll recognize that next year as a senior, bring him back. Uh, hopefully, he's going to be, uh, it'd be nice to say, what, 1,700 maybe, 1,800 hopefully. If, 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 wow. If wishful thinking. Uh, it was a very shortened season this year for basketball. We only had uh, 15 games. Normally, we're in the 30s. Uh, you normally schedule 26 plus uh, the additional games, but due to COVID, so it was reduced. Um, I think this team would have had a real good shot this year to, to for South Jersey. Uh, last year was uh, we, we got the final run at Cherry Hill, um, and then COVID hit and shut everything down. So, uh, Coach, congratulations. Hey, thank you, and congratulations to our honorees this evening. And you know, um, thank you for serving us with EHT pride. All right, so with that said, if um, you know, folks have some homework or um, another place to go, you know, you're not going to offend me. I do have two more presentations, but that, that's totally up to you. And they're going to be quick, Mr. Castellano. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, now we're back to normal. Now we got it. <laughs> Okay, moving on uh, throughout through the superintendent's report. Um, this some of this, a lot of this information was shared with the board um, at a prior meeting, but I just want to um, present again and remind folks of our preschool expansion and reconfiguration plan uh, presented to you by, by central office. Uh, I will remind you again, we had a strategic plan four years ago, that strategic plan involved Embrace, Engage, Educate, and uh, we were very proud to say that we were able to um, check off um, what was the, our stakeholders shared with us, which were items of importance for them and to them. It was a collaborative effort of over 100 um, folks from the community. It was very goal-focused, and we are very proud that first time we really stuck to um, the strategic plan, um, our vision goals, and um, and how we executed them. So there was many things as I shared that we did cover in our strategic plan, but this is one of the final things that we've worked on, and this is going back over a year and a half ago, prior to COVID, um, that probably would have been presented last spring, but we didn't have that uh, in our schedule or in our mindset at the time. So finishing up on the work of uh, stakeholder proposals, um, we are presenting to you a configuration for the sleigh ball uh, and SWIFT schools. It's a um, proposal of a configuration that will begin in September. So let's look on the left. Our Davenport complex, our primary school, has full day kindergarten and first grade. Our elementary school um, has the second grade and third grade. Our proposal um, includes having Swift and Sleigh Ball complex mirror the same thing with the 
<coughs> full day kindergarten in first grade in the Swift School and the second and third grade in the Slave Ball School. If you look across at the totals, we have even, um, pretty much even numbers in our, in our grade levels, um, and this is a mirror. Now, why, why is this happening? Looking at Slave Ball Primary, we have a preschool program there. Sitting in that building right now, um, the grant allowed us to expand our preschool program, but along in the, with those pre-K classrooms, we have three kindergarten classrooms in there. So it behooves us to remove the, remove the three kindergarten classes, allow us to take on more preschool classes, move the three kindergarten to SWIFT. What that does is that bumps out the second and third grade. So SWIFT will have, again, the uh, full day kindergarten and the first grade and the second and third will be at the elementary. Regarding preschool expansion, remember what we had. Then we had a half day preschool program where we had five teachers in 10 sections. We are in the process to getting to what we're projecting for September of 21 because of the support that you gave us for full day kindergarten because we applied for a grant and received that grant of $3.8 million dollars we're proud to say we'll have a full day preschool program that includes these positions. It opens up opportunities, more job opportunities um, for you know qualified folks. Um, so just want to remind you of those things. That's what preschool expansion looks like. And the benefits of this reconfiguration um, involves all our stakeholders. And we had conversations with all these stakeholders. But for the students, those targeted interventions and services, and the consistency of the classmates. For teachers, the collaborative focus on learning, the PLC student achievement and growth, the community. It's uniting of that campus, of those three buildings, into one school. It's one school. Three separate buildings, one school. For transportation, it's one home bus stop. For food services, our menus are based on our ages and the needs of the students. And the facility would be one school code represented by the DOE as per approval of the Acarper Township Board of Education. So with this hashtag EHT Pride, I present to you three buildings, <coughs> two schools, and one complex, one school now named the Swift Slave Ball Complex. Okay? So without further ado, that is my recap and my presentation to you. Uh, we will need the board approval um, to be able to switch over to that one school code, and that'll be next week. Yep. All right, so we have one more presentation, and I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Santilli and Mrs. Moss, who are telling us that we are hashtag EHT ready. Okay, good evening. Uh, one of the action items tonight uh, is for our ESSER II grant. Uh, we would be seeking approval tonight. Uh, submission of the grant um, will be uh, by this Friday. Um, we are prepared to, uh, you know, provide the necessary information, and we wanted to share tonight some of the um, expenditures that would be within that grant, a, a huge focus. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of different terms being thrown around out there. Um, from learning loss to learning delay to learning acceleration. Um, however, we do have a plan in place to service all of our students, especially students that we've identified that have had true learning delay uh, during this pandemic um, based off of the uh, you know, uh, data that we have within the district that has gleaned um, really where those needs are. So this is just a snapshot uh, of what that is going to look like and, and we won't spend a ton of time going into the nitty-gritty of, of this but we wanted to share with the board tonight um, what is going to be put into that grant and you know in preparation for this um, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, Ms. Moss the um, different grade levels in terms of how that is going to roll out uh, and then we'll go from there sure so our focus um, will begin in June, focusing on our current seniors who might need a little extra boost to help get through some courses to fulfill their graduation requirements. Um, so we'll be working with those students. Our teachers are hard at work with all of our students right now, continuing that work. But looking to start June 14th for our seniors who need to do some remediation with courses to be able to graduate. For our um, current first and seventh graders, as Mr. Santilli uh, mentioned, we are identifying true learning delay using comparative data, and we're going to be able to bring them in um, to work on some fundamentals in math 
ELA, STEM, and social emotional lessons. We will have in-person and virtual options. And then we really wanted to focus on our uh, transitional grades into the high school. It's a big shift for students, a lot of skills that are necessary. So doing um, one week for our current eighth graders for that transition into high school, and then a week for our current ninth graders who may not, who might be virtual still, a way for them to kind of get in, get acclimated to the high school and that transition from middle school to high school. We also will have uh, the learning loss at the high school to focus on core contents, working on the um, Khan economy and social and life skills. And then of course we have our extended school year for our special education population. And that will be focused on core contents related to the IEP and related services. And then there's going to be a special education supplemental program. So that's going to open up beyond the normal constraints of ESY to all of our special education population. That will also be in person. And then the rest of the money is going to go towards um, out of district ESY. And then we have a mentoring program that we're going to use throughout the next school year to continue to assist our students in coming back to school and getting used to being in school again and then the technology plan for one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. In addition to that, um, not part of the ESSER grant and, and what you're gonna see as, you know, what we'll be releasing as a district, of course, is gonna be, you know, in essence, a way to market all of this. Um, this is a lot of information and this is just the grant. However, we have other programs um, that we'll be rolling out this summer. Um, so we want, we want the board to know in the community that we are going to market this in the sense so everybody is clear in regards to what is happening when what is happening where, and as well as, as who could qualify for a particular program. For instance, Talons will still have their summer program, and that will, in essence, be running all summer at the Miller School. And also Aspire will have their summer program, which will be for fourth and fifth grades. Not necessarily part of the grant, but we didn't want to um, you know, have the board feel as if that wasn't taking place. That is also an extension to all these other opportunities. And that concludes our update. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Castellano, that completes the superintendent's report for the work session. Very good. Uh, thank you for that report. I'll just see if any board members have questions uh, before we go ahead into finance. Mrs. Bird. I have um, a couple questions. The first is on uh, the one building for Swift and Slayball. Um, I saw on the slide that there are 19 pre-K classrooms in Slayball. With 19 pre-K classrooms, will this um, alignment of the two buildings into one allow for full specials for these classrooms so that teachers have their prep time? Additionally, um, what are the empty room counts in these buildings? I didn't notice that on the slides. And my final is on the ESSA, um, the Special Education Supplement Program. It says core content based on IEP mandates and related services. So can you give an example of what that means? Um, does that mean that if something's written into the IEP and the student didn't meet that goal, they're going to be identified for the um, program or is it something else. I'm, I'm confused as to what those bullet points mean. Okay, you want to start with, um, I, I think I got them all down, the specials, MD counts, and ESSER. Is that correct, Mr. Berg? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Santilli, Miss um, Moss, I know you worked on the scheduling of, of the building between the operational side and the curriculum side, so please share. So for, um, I'll start actually backwards if that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. in terms of, um, the ESY supplemental, um, what that focus is good on going to be is, is actually an extension of, of normal ESY. However, all special education students um, will be invited to that particular program. Uh, the interest survey is gonna be going out. Um, of course, you know, space is limited, so hence why we do those interest surveys um, to see who, who is interested in attending. Um, we're gonna then have transportation as well included. Uh, and it would really be a focus of not necessarily just what would be in a student's IEP, but also based off of the data that we have 
where we can help them with additional supplemental support. It could be a focus on uh, more towards literacy, a combination of literacy and mathematics, of course, social emotional. Uh, we do have components for SEL uh, that would be included and of course related services. Um, and that could be a time to make up some of those services that during the pandemic haven't been able to be uh, met. Okay, thank you. That clarifies because that based on IEP mandates was a little confusing. So the fact that it's, it's based on need of the student, not just what's written in their IEP. That's awesome. Yep. Great job. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. The, the preschool. Um, so the, the preschool, <laughs> and, and I'm going to let Chandra address some of that too, but um, there are certain um, rules, and I'll let Chandra maybe talk about that as far as the specials are concerned with the expansion classrooms with preschool, correct? Yep, so specific to the expansion, um, there are no specials. Um, the preschool expansion program, they stay in the classroom and they go through the core curricular contents areas. Um, the uh, specials that will remain in the um, play ball primary building is gonna be um, music, specifically to um, help with the MD students who already get music and find enrichment through that program. Um, as far as the MD counts, currently there are seven classrooms Next year, we're projected to have five classrooms based on the early intervention identification process. Okay. Uh, I, I, do, we, do we get through all those three? I had the prep time question as far as specials to do prep time. That's a scheduling thing. I'm not sure if you guys want to cover that. So that, uh, what I would say is that is being determined right now so of course we have to rework schedules um, based off of start times end times um, you know in preparation for September um, and administration along with um, you know Mr. Dorso and then uh, eventually the new supervisor will work on uh, work through all of that okay so let me go to uh, Mr. Delabarca or Ms. Alabard who did I see first Thank you. Okay, um, so I have a few questions too. Um, with uh, Swift and Slayball, putting them together, having teachers move, um, is it possible to get some substitutes in to help um, maybe give the teacher some more time? Um, I'm sure some teachers probably have 20 years worth of stuff that they have to pack up to move. Um, and then for summer school, the summer programs, I was wondering how many hours a day it is and whether the parents have a choice of in-person or virtual. And was an interest uh, survey sent out to staff to make sure there's enough staff to cover all these programs. If you don't mind, the last two topics, I have teacher who summer school, what were the other ones? Um, for the summer summer programs, um, if the parents have a choice of in person or virtual, um, there's the two different dates because I'm sure some um, mm -hmm. families already have uh, vacations planned. Right. Okay. And if there's enough staff to cover all these programs. Okay. okay the teacher move. Um, we we work out with the um, the union, and I have discussion with with Mrs. Lawson. Um, because of the timing of at the end of the year, we do have half days that the teachers have, but also sometimes the teachers want to see their kids the last couple days, so we have to speak to the union and see um, what's, what's best for them. Regarding summer school and the programming, um, I'm gonna allow the folks who planned it and have plans um, on paper to share, and then Dr. Charlton, you could take the personnel piece um, regarding the advertisements and responses uh, to, uh, to the jobs. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so in terms of uh, the options, so parents will have both options um, available to them. So there's an in-person option uh, as well as a all virtual option. Uh, we were intentional with that because we know that even by parent choice, it's, you know, uh, with the executive order still in effect, um, some students may still um, be opted as an all virtual student. Um, however, they can also do both. Um, so that interest survey will, will also provide that information for us. Um, the in-person, uh, you know, option is going to be a longer day. It's going to be 
um, from nine, nine to, eight. No, eight to one. Um, eight to one. Uh, we mirrored that with Aspire um, because we wanted to help our support staff, um, and you know, we've we've done a lot of you know we've had a lot of conversations around that as well. Uh, however, the virtual option is not as long. We understand that we're not going to hold their attention for for that many hours straight. Um, so that's going to be a three-hour, um, you know, virtual piece. So hopefully that answers your question. And as far as the staffing, the ESY program was the first one to be advertised approximately three weeks ago. Uh, in terms of teaching staff and certified staff, that is completely full. Um, there was a need to make an additional one-week posting for paraprofessionals because they did not fill all the spots. That's wrapping up now. And we're actually meeting with Mr. Dorso and his staff on Friday to ensure that all students with IEPs and have a need for a paraprofessional are matched up. Uh, the current posting that's out right now is for the Aspire and Talents program and that has a few more days to run and then the one for the learning delay program after tonight and communicating the the scope of the program to the board we were going to get that posting out towards the end of the week um, but you bring up a good question in that it is a lot of summer programs and there's only so many staff available in the summer and how to staff them so we're keeping our fingers crossed in terms of the last program being advertised going to go to Mr. Tell Park and then back to Mrs. Bird. I don't have any questions. What I have is a compliment and a thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, this is, uh, as an educator, this is so, so thoroughly planned. It's so thought out. And I think of you guys, you, the whole team should be complimented for the detail that's in there. And that the idea that our students who may have suffered something in social, emotionally, academically, whatever, you thought of all those areas and you're trying to provide for those students. And I think that is the greatest compliment we as a district can, can uh, put forth. That we're thinking about our kids, we're coming up with outstanding programs throughout, throughout the summer. The, uh, the questions that were asked uh, delved into some of the concerns maybe about staffing or about uh, when the kids can go and the in-person all of that. But I think you have that all covered and we're thinking about all those areas. And I'm just so proud of us mm -hmm. uh, and you folks have done, I think it's an outstanding job, but I look forward to seeing the results of this when we come back in September, because I think we're going to be able to maybe have a pretty good start of the school year if we get these kids taken care of. And I'm just so happy to be part of the whole thing. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mark, I like I like to thank you for for you know um, making that statement and and supporting us uh, as always. Um, I just want to also add, without getting into detail, um, there probably hasn't been a webinar. Um, a a conference, a conversation that we haven't had as a team, um, and I can tell you that every time we walk out of those, um, we're, we, <laughs> we're, we're always um, high-fiving in a sense, or air high-fiving that, that we're right on point. Everything that they're suggesting, suggesting that this grant, grant is made for and should be focused on, um, we, have been, we have been ahead of the curve with that, so with our planning. So um, it means, means a lot that you... Uh, well, that just another good. point. You, you folks know that I'm involved with the state, and I, I see a lot of things going on at the different, all over the state that I hear about. And this is outstanding. I think we should, we should be bragging. Oh, that was the other point I wanted to make. We have to sell this in detail to our parents. We really have to make every effort possible to make sure our parents are aware of what we're offering so we don't miss anybody. Uh, we don't want to miss any of those people out there, and I think that's a compliment. And I know statewide, we're probably doing more than almost anybody that I, I've heard about in the state, and I think that's something to be more to add to how proud we all should be. And that's Mr. Del Market, you, you hit, hit it right on, you know, the nail on the head, because you know, sitting in, in my meetings, as you, you said in meetings, you hear the information that comes from the DOE, um, guidance is coming out at the, end, at the end of May, possibly this week, but the end of the end of May, but we, you know we're already on these things we know we have to be on we have a plan in place we're not waiting and my guess is just what you're saying we're above and beyond yeah. um, with the, the expectation so you know very proud of the team um, it, it is um, uh, a lot of work um, it's thinking ahead right thinking ahead um, last year's a lot harder than this year because of the unknowns but thinking ahead and having a plan in place for what we all care about and that's our students so thank you excellent agree uh, any anyone else on, before I go back to Mrs. Bird? Okay, Mrs. Bird. Thank you. I just um, 
I, I don't understand uh, the numbers, so it, I probably just didn't write them down fast enough. So, um, Ms. Nye, if you wouldn't mind clarifying for me. We have 19 pre-K classrooms in sleigh ball, and they don't have specials. They have, it, it, it's all in-house in the classroom. So when do those teachers get prep? I can't answer that question as I'm not in that world. I can just say that you're talking about for next September, and I think Mr. Santilli right. talked about Mr. Dorso and the new director working on scheduling. Okay, so um, that's that is being worked out. Yeah. Okay, so that's I not got that something part. I can answer. All right, good, thank you. So, and then the seven MD rooms, that's seven total MD rooms from pre K through third in Swift and Slayball no. this year? In Slayball Primary is a pre K only. And those are so ASD the rooms specific, preschool disabled specifically. Right now, this year, there are seven rooms. Next year, in September, will be five PSD okay. specifically. The, so the seven's out of the 19 or in addition to in the In addition. Okay, so the- uh, The 19 so is preschool pre expansion, which is an inclusion okay. program. And then, how many MD, I think my question was not, um, I meant it not to be specific to pre-K for the MD classrooms. How many MD classrooms are there in Swift and Slayball for the projected next year's um, combination? And how MD, does that compare to Davenport since we're you know, MD, trying to model yeah. the schools? MD grades one through three will remain, excuse me, kindergarten through three. It's K-1 and two, three rooms. They will remain at Davenport. That's not part of the complex. It's at Davenport now and it will stay there. I'm, I just am I'm asking, like, to quant how how many rooms do we have from our pre-K? Or, okay, so Swift and Slayball will be pre-K through three, so pre-K, K one, two, three, right? So how many of those will be in the new complex, and how many do we have at Davenport? Excluding obviously, we don't have pre-K at Davenport anymore. We have K one, two, three. So I'm just trying to compare, like. There is no comparison, Mrs. Bird. I mean, I'm just gonna, pre-K disabled mm -hmm. is your MD room, but for preschool right. students, that's PSD. That's at Slave Ball Primary. Mm -hmm. Davenport Complex holds K through three MD rooms. Right. And that's staying at Davenport Complex. How it's many not of be those impacted. rooms do we have? I can get that for you. Thank that's you. For Davenport, not in Slave Ball. I thought you asked for Swift Slave Ball specifically. So I'm just trying to, because we were, trying to model the schools after each other. So I'm just trying to get an understanding of what Swift Slave Ball will look like as a whole, because it's a whole community, and what Davenport looks like as a whole community, not gen ed versus um, self-contained versus, I, I, I want to see the whole picture. So that's what I'm yeah, I'm sorry we don't so have that. I'm going to get that for you, but it wasn't part of the presentation because right. we were actually presenting the changes in Swift's label. So right, I will get right. that for you in a moment. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. I was just going to say that um, I feel to, when Ms. Bird was asking that question, all I could think of was um, Fernwood, and, Fernwood and Alder. You know, I, I feel like it's, you know, having two of, two schools that are, you know, supposed to be somewhat similar or equitable, you know, equitable between two schools, I think that that's, I feel like that's going to be a um, continuous project. Um, and I do think that it's often going to be compared in our community um, to kind of make sure that there's equity amongst the schools and, um, that you know whatever whatever Davenport gets, make sure that um, the Swift Slave Wall Complex has as well. So I, that's what I just, just had to say. That's what I thought of when Fernwood um, when they created Alder as a second middle school. There was a, there was a constant comparison and making sure that whatever the students had in one school they had the other. So I, I I'm I'm believing that our administration will always is working toward making sure that that's working. And the other question is. Um, I guess question I was thinking about with um, about the pre-K and the teacher specials and I was just going to ask the question I'm, and I, I think I don't answer but every pre-K room has it has a uh, teacher's assistant right they all have yes. the TA correct, yeah. That's and correct. that TA I just didn't did it, the TAs um, usually I'm not sure exactly how it happens here but most of the grants they have to have a they usually can be um, a teacher assistant is someone that can be with the children 
um, whether the teacher's in the room or not. So I don't know if that was the way that we were thinking about probably incorporating the press. That's that, correct. That, that, so yeah. there, are, there are methods out there, and I can talk to you about the methods, but as far as the actual schedule, that's not mm -hmm. my world. We are using teaching assistants. We're mm -hmm. also using what they call floater teachers. The ratio is one to eight. So for every eight classrooms, you have a floater teacher. So there's two new floater teachers going into this grant as well. So there is a way to cover the prep as far as the, I don't want to get into the actual schedule because that's mm -hmm. not my world, but in the grant are teacher assistants, one per grade. There are floater teacher assistants and there are floater teachers specifically for coverage that the grant does fund. Yep. So you're correct, Mrs. Okay. Gilbert Boyd. I have numbers for you if you're ready for Davenport. Yes, thank you. So K-1 is the class name for self-contained. It's not kindergarten or for it's kin just K-1. There are six at Davenport Primary. And 2-3 MD self-contained is six at Davenport Elementary. Okay. That's it. <laughs> oh, and just one other thing with in our pre-K students, they they do. I'm assuming that they have a nap incorporated in their day. Yes, there was a one-hour nap period. It has to be part of the day. Yes, that's correct. I have another spot. That they can. No problem. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What about Swift and Slave Ball? I will. Um, Swift Slave Ball Complex has no MD. They only have preschool disabled, and they have preschool disabled of seven rooms. They're going to go to five, and that's at the Slave Ball Primary Building, which will remain in Slave Ball Primary Building. Davenport does not have any PSD or preschool expansion. We made that last year. We made that last year to put them in one area. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move now to finance and operations and ask for our committee report. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Um, at our finance and operations committee, we met on May 4th here at the Alder Boardroom, and attending was myself, Mr. Price, Mrs. Sullivan, Ms. Salaji, Ms. Sinea, Mr. Brunetta, Director of Facilities. Um, we talked about um, facilities, project updates for 2020, 2021, Info to be shared with the full board on 5-11-21, which, which is tonight. Capital reserve recommendations, food service, the EBT P cards, next round of funding, needs lunch, need, we need to launch uh, apps. Uh, I'm sorry, need lunch apps. Um, the next thing we discussed was distribution of over 2,000 meals a week added Davenport at 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. We talked about transportation, recruitment, is ongoing, uh, talking about working on dual role drivers with the EHDEA action to be recommended um, to the board on May 18th. Business office, we discussed student activities, changes, and a bookkeeping position uh, job description. Um, we talked about a preschool financial specialist, which is on the agenda tonight. Action items. Um, we spoke about um, out-of-district travel. We spoke about the, um, the ESSER grant that was pretty much discussed a little bit earlier, as you heard. Um, action items for May 18th next week. There's quite a few of them on here. Uh, we talked about rejecting bids for door replacements, award engineer of record, uh, recreation grants that are due, Perkins grant, Policy 6421, gifts, grants, acceptance, asset disposals, ITS transportation, and we also discussed permission to bid lease uh, purchasing financing. We talked about uh, Elisa's Law Security Grant Resolution Language. I think we'll get into that a little bit more tonight. Um, other items discussed, we discussed the printer signs with the township, which are the drug-free weapon school zones. Um, that you see along different roadways. So we're working with the police department to see that they're up to date. Um, also, we discussed the Garden State Academy, a little bit about security there, and we, we, we can get into later. Um, uh, what are we doing with the Eagle Academy? Well, there's going to be more to follow with that on the strategic planning for year 2022. There, there's going to be, we, we need to discuss the Eagle Academy a little bit more. And then, of course, use of facilities. 
was discussed, Freeford Township uh, recreation teams, and, and we'll discuss that in June's meeting to recommend the policy. So that's my report, and I'm, I'm sure Ms. Anea will have a follow-up on some of the things in there. And of course, as always, it's available in your Google Drive, all the information that I read out here. So thank you. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Price. And I do want to just expand on a few of the items on here. Um, so to start with the um, Alyssa's Law, as you guys remember, this has been ongoing since the state passed the bond, once in 2018-ish. Um, we, as a district, um, qualified for $413,000 um, for implementing or complying with Alyssa's Law. Uh, the district decided to go with an app we've been talking about a few times. Um, with that grant money not being able to fully fund all of our buildings, lights and strobes, that could be an option for compliance. Um, we decided to use the money and apply for the grant with the, for the reimbursement of camera projects that had already been done at the high school and middle school. Knowing when the funding comes through, we will then go ahead and do our elementary upgrades. We submitted formally in November. They are just now getting around to look at approving them and they want specific resolution language to read that local funds will support any project in excess in, excuse me, in excess of the grant amount, knowing that it's not enough money to do the full project. So I updated the resolution so we can submit that just to read. The board does recognize that if the project or in specific, this in this specific area was the cameras, if it's in excess of the 413,000, the board will fund the difference. Well, we already did. So that should go through no problem. Um, the ESSER application we already covered. The door replacement, there were questions from the board. The board gets the agenda the Friday before the meeting, so you guys can look at it and ask any questions. There were two questions that came up. The first being, um, if there was interest in our own department up to um, upgrading the doors that need to be replaced. So this specific bid went out. Um, we have uh, identified um, doors at the high school, Fernwood, Alder, and Davenport Elementary specifically, interior doors and exterior doors. Um, the doors themselves, um, are like some of them are laminate, so they're coming apart. They have weeping coming from the bottoms, so they're they're in some pretty bad shape. So we did identify the ones that were the neediest, if you will. Um, we we saw the dollar amount. Um, we talked about a rough estimate about five hundred thousand, and that was the beginning of the school year. Um, going out for bid now. Once we got all the specs together of which doors needed, size, hardware, which door does it, what side does it open, left open, right open, all these things. The bid went out and it came in, um, all three came in for over a million dollars. So we are rejecting those on the agenda for next week because obviously we can't afford to do a million dollars worth of doors. Um, so we're putting the bid back out to do two schools at a time, identifying the two schools. We're doing high school and Alder first, and then if more money comes out or if we have an opportunity as a phase two, maybe a year from now, whatever the case may be, we'll do um, the second two schools. So the question from the um, a board member was about the last, you know, can we actually look at doing it in-house? Um, there are over 500 doors and we don't have the manpower to make sure it's the proper door with the proper hardware district one. So it's not something, we, we do like to do a lot in-house, but that's not something we have the ability to do. Another question came up um, regarding the proposals. We did receive six proposals for uh, mechanical engineer services. Um, the question, uh, we did have them available at our committee meeting. It is available with me today. So before you take action next week, if you'd like to see the proposals, I do have them with me. Um, that concludes that section. I'm going to go back to the finance and ops. And I think that might be it for the updates. Unless there's any questions, I might have missed. If you have any questions, please let me know. Are there any board member uh, questions or comments on finance and operations? Everybody, uh, everybody's good. Uh, we need to take action on 5.2 through 5.4. So may I have a motion on that, please? Motion. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on those three items? Seeing none, may we have roll call, please? Sorry, Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Dallabarca? Yes. 
Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's move to curriculum, and I'll ask for our curriculum committee report, please. On May 4th, 2021, the curriculum committee met. There was a special presentation from the representatives of letters to give an overview of the science of reading and the professional development that will occur for elementary administrators and teachers. This occurred at 4.30 via Zoom. In attendance for this presentation was Mr. Della Barca, Ms. Bird, Mr. Santilli, Dr. Gruccio, Mr. Dorso, Ms. Moss, as well as myself. The regular committee meeting then com commenced virtually through Google Meet beginning at 5 p.m. with the same attendees and additionally Ms. Gilbert Floyd. <coughs> Professional development for the staff that will need board approval was identified and shared with the committee. There were no anticipated field trips requiring approval due to COVID-19. Other updates for the committee focused on the Communications Academy, students receiving second place in the Just Drive PSA contest through NJM Insurance, partnerships being explored to support mental health, wellness, and counseling services for both elementary and secondary students, and plans for summer curriculum writing. Mr. Dorso presented the findings and recommendations made through the Reading Committee for Special Education Programming and interventions. Mr. Dorso and Ms. Moss also gave an overview of learning acceleration summer opportunities for identified students and how the summer learning will carry over and throughout the 2021-2022 school year, including a mentoring program and integrating the new interventionalist positions. Specific enrollment and details of the programs will be forthcoming. That is about all. Thank you. Do we have any uh, questions or comments from board members on curriculum? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I'm going to ask Dr. Charlton if there is anything on personnel for public session. Thank you, Mr. President. We just discussed the idea of new appointees when they're coming to the board that in the June meeting, we will return to having them visit us so we can welcome our newest faces in person again. Good, that's right. We like, we like seeing people in person. It was great tonight. Um, next, we're going to move uh, then on to policy and I'll ask for our policy committee report. Thank you, and I'm pretty much going to be reading it because I left my policy committee report on my printer at home. So, you're welcome. Um, all right, so on May 4, 2021, the policy committee met, and in the present was uh, Dr. Gruccio, Mr. Santilli, Ms. Elko Howe, Ms. White, her colleague, uh, Mr. Castellano, Mr. Ireland, Ms. Gil Mrs. Gilbert Floyd, and myself. Old business that uh, we reviewed was bylaw 0169, board member use of internet social networks and other forms of electronic communication. Uh, the committee recommends moving forward with the language that we have discussed at the committee level and at full board level, and that will be up for final reading next week. Some new business. Uh, this was a mandated stress ESME alert, bylaw 0145 regarding board member resignation and removal. This, uh, this mandated change is due to some new, uh, a new statute and addresses when a board member must resign, must be removed, or may be removed from the board in accordance to NJ statute, NJSA 18A. 12-3 and it indicates that any member who fails to attend three consecutive meetings of the board without good cause may be removed. The mandate change, uh, changes some language. Um, it, it was originally kind of ambiguous if it was a, uh, they had to miss a regular meeting. Um, now it states more clearly it, it can be a regular meeting, a work session meeting, um, 
but it does not delineate uh, committee level meetings for that. That is a mandated change. Uh, policy 2415, Every Student Succeeds Act. Again, this is a stress test May alert. Um, it is, has been updated to list the general provisions of Every Student Succeeds Act. The revised policy guide provides some general updates and removes listings all the individual title programs as this list is not required to be included in a policy guide. It basically updates the language. Um, and while doing that, it causes us to abolish some former policies that are no longer le necessary, as you see in the report 24-1501 and further down, 24-1503. They're abolished because the language is updated to more accurately reflect the law. So policy 2415 is a mandated change. Policy 2415.02, Title I, Fiscal Responsibilities, also mandated. It's been revised to provide an additional section, supplement, not supplant. We had a, a uh, language lesson that night, for sure, and uh, went over that. Um, and I'm going to leave that up for Steve to address, because I am still fuzzy on supplant versus supplement. Um, and I have no problem sharing that. Uh, and this is a mandated change. So when I'm finished, I hope he can clear that up. We still were questioning it, like, even over the week. Um, OK. So sorry about that. And now policy 2415-05, student surveys, analysis, and or evaluations. This addresses the issue of a school district obtaining the written consent from parents for their children to participate in a survey, analysis, or evaluation funded in whole or in part by the U.S. Department of Education. No Child Left Behind included a major amendment to the Federal Protection of People Rights Amendment, FERPA, and that gave parents additional rights which are still current under ESSA. So this has been removed, it has been revised to remove No Child Left Behind citation at the end of the policy guide and to provide updated definition of minor student Social security number is not protected information area, but it is a protected information area under the New Jersey law, NJSA. A, NJSA 18A 36-34, which is outlined in policy guide 9560. This is a mandated change. And the following is also a mandate, mandated change, policy 2415.20. Um, every student succeed acts complaints the ESEA requires a complaint procedure for resolving complaints filed by an individual or organization alleging a school district of the NJDOE violated the provisions of the ESSA. Policy and Regulation Guides 2415.20 have been revised, updating the provisions, provisions of the complaint procedure to be in compliance with ESSA. Policy and Regulation Guides 2415.20 are mandated for all school districts that receive federal funding under the ESSA and must be adopted by the board. Policy 6360, political con contributions, stress estimate, this is a mandated stress SMA. Um, alert policy guide 6360 states a political contribution disclosure form is required for a board of education contracts for contracted educational services provided under no child left behind in excess of 17,500 as per the Department of Community Affairs. The policy guide has been revised to remove the provision referencing contracted educational services provided under No Child Left Behind and has been replaced with any educational services provided under any federally funded program, which would include any ESSA program. <laughs> policy guide 6360 is mandated. Okay, policy 8330, student records. This is a uh, mandated revision as well from Strauss Esme. Policy Guide 8330 references a provision of No Child Left Behind that addresses student information being provided to military recruiters, an institution of higher education, or prospective employees, employers, excuse me, if a school district prepares a student information directory. The SM made only several minor changes to this provision of, of NCLB, which are addressed in NJSA 18A. 36-19.1 and outlined in further detail in Policy Guide 97.13. Policy Guide 8330 has been revised to reflect these changes. Policy Guide 8330 is mandated. 
I'm almost done, I promise. Policy 9713, recruitment of special interest groups, Strauss S. Mailer 222. Policy Guide 9713 addresses the requirements outlined in the same as I've been quoting and in the ESSA. The ESSA made several minor changes in the requirements. A minor student may only opt out of their information being disclosed with parent consent and the district must annually notify parents of the opt-out provision. This is a mandated change. Policy 5304, excuse me, 5330.04, at administering, administering an open opioid antidote. Um, this was a mandated change as well and a welcome one because we had debated this a little bit and there, they solidified some guidance on this policy. So the new statutes um, are in effect and uh, Strauss Esme developed the policy and regulation guides for this and outlined with the, lang with, with the language in the statute. Sub subsequently, the NJDOE published guidelines for opioid antidote administration within schools that included some recommended options and details that are not included in the statutes. Policy and regulation guides 5330.04 have been revised to provide the options and additional details as provided in the guidance. The revised policy and regulation guides provide greater detail regarding the, the physician standing orders, the training requirements for the employees designated to administer the opioid antidote, the replacement of the opioid antidote upon expiration, the administration of the antidote and the limitation of liability attached with administering the antidote. The revised policy regulation guide should replace the district's existing policy and regulation. And this is a mandated change. Um, we are still working on the policy 7231 property uh, policy crowdfunding. We had quite a busy night as you can tell from the report. And so that is forthcoming uh, possibly on next month's agenda. And I apologize for the long-windedness, even though you're used to it, but um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments on policy? Mrs. Sullivan. I still have a question on bylaw 0169. Uh, Number six in that policy states that we are not allowed to answer any questions from the public on any social media or in person. If I'm misunderstanding this, uh, we're not allowed to answer anything pertained to the school district. We should refer everything to the proper people. I'm wondering if this means, the way it is written means if somebody says the high school meets at 9 o'clock and we know it meets at 7.30, we're not allowed to do that. To do that, is that correct? We need to refer them to somebody? I still think this whole policy is uh, entirely too limiting. And for those, if this policy is going to go through, I'd like the board members that have me blocked from their social media to address that and uh, let me see their social media also. Do we have any other comments? Yes. Mrs. Slarty. This is the only thing on the, uh, this bylaw is the only thing that was discussed that is not mandated. I submitted a shorter version. Mm -hmm. I don't see why two pages have to remind somebody of how to behave as a board member, uh, there is a code of ethics that you're to follow that you swore to, and I believe that that should be enough of a reminder. Um, so therefore, I can't support this policy. Any other board members? Okay. Go ahead, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Did you have something to say? No, I just wanted to know if there was going to, am I reading that part that I mentioned, am I reading that correctly? Number six, under the policy. I'll go ahead and let the, I'll let her, let the chair respond. Um, I read number six as board business, and I think that's different than daily 
times of when a school begins. So I'm reading this and I'm interpreting this as uh, postings regard a board business or just school district business that could be perceived as you knowing more than what maybe you're intending. Um, I think that we, um, I, I hear what you guys are saying and I appreciate your comments and your input, definitely. Um, as the chair, I think that we have gone back to the drawing board a bunch of times on this and um, we've discussed it in, in full board discussions, in committee level discussions, and I think at this, we, we've taken the language from the experts that we trust, Strauss Esme, and New Jersey school boards, we've combined the language, we haven't added to it, we've just come, took what, we're, you know, from the best of both and put it together, and we've also had our own legal experts go over it. We've had so much, um, discussion over this, I think it's time that we vote on it and let the chips fall where they may. And if it becomes an issue where it's causing more problems than what we're, you know, we're, what we're trying to avoid is then, then let's relook at it later. But for right now, I think it's time that we try it and we see how things go and we can always go back to the drawing board later. Um, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone. I'm just saying to answer number six, this is how I'm interpreting it. And, uh, you know, um, and if the rest of the board wants to move forward, uh, you know, I suggest as the committee chair, we do so. Can I ask Mrs. Halkalko if there's anything you want to, um, chime in on uh, with regard to that provision. Sure, that provision was one of the ones from Strauss Estimates recommendation, and I also agree with um, the interpretation that it's discussing specifically Board of Education or school district business. Um, if it's a parent asking a general just school question that you know because you're a grandparent or a parent, I think that's a little different. And I just also want to point out, before you go to all those disclaimers, it does say under on top of it, when using social networks, board members are advised to. It's just reminders. It's reminders that you should be aware of when you're on social media. It's not saying shall, it's just saying board members are advised to do those following things. Okay. Uh, any, anything else? Um, this is Bill Floyd and, and then Mr. Ireland. Yeah. Um, I did have, a, a, I guess, a statement or question, but I, I had asked Ms. Sullivan she had something else she had wanted to share. Um, I just want to get clarification on the um, the social media and who's who's blocking people who are um, I didn't know what you, what you were, were saying are you I am blocked physically from a few board members any of their pages so so we talk about limitations and censorship and things of that nature in this pile like having brought up about this particular policy but I don't know that we're we are definitely mandated to work together as a board, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we're required to be friends on Facebook or social media. I don't know if that's a even. I don't know where that where that would come into play, or how we can require someone to unblock us or accept our friend request. I don't know if that. I, I don't know if that really fits here. That's well, one thing to be blocked. It's another thing. Uh, when you know folks aren't friends, those are Correct. two two separate things. Correct. Um, so, but because if I unfriend someone or something, that that that, that wouldn't be something we bring up here. I don't think. As long as we work together. Yeah, who you're friends with on Facebook is not nothing to do with being a board member. Mr. Ireland. Thank you. Um, just going into my notes, Mrs. Sullivan, just to answer your question and to piggyback on Mrs. Bird and Mrs. Hel uh, Elko. Um, I, I did ask that question in one of our previous meetings because we talked about this extensively in multiple policy board meetings, um, committee meetings, excuse me. Uh, because I asked, can, I, can somebody share something like an accomplishment on the, on the district or, or like you said, answer one of those questions? 
And if you bump up a little bit into the policy, it says a board member's use of social, me social network shall not damage the reputation of the school district employees, students, and their families. Answering a question nine o'clock or um, sharing a district what um, accomplishment or something like that is not damaging the reputation of the of the district or anything and I think that's what we brought up in our committee and that's why the clause is up there so to answer your question directly I don't I don't think it does meet that Mrs. Stone. Again, I want to reiterate, I have never seen on any social media anybody damaging somebody else's reputation. I think this policy is entirely too restrictive. Uh, nobody has a right really to monitor my Facebook page. Uh, again, we sign a code of ethics at the beginning of every year of our term or when we accept our position. And yes, we're hand we are subject to a higher standard that I don't think we need to be reminded of everything in this policy. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. Um, Ms. Howe, could you refresh my memory, please, on the purpose and why these policies were drafted? Because I believe the Code of Ethics were written prior to the uh, social media, so the need for having them um, falls outside of the ethics. So could you please refresh our memory just so that we're clear as to why the additional policies were necessarily written from Strauss, Strauss SMA and, and New Jersey school boards? Sure. Uh, Thank you. Exactly what you just said, Mrs. Bird. When the Code of Ethics was written, social media was not what it is today. I don't even think it was contemplated um, when those Code of Ethics were created. So if you talk to Strauss SMA or if you talk to Rand Friedman or another school board's representative, they will tell you that the reason school boards and stress has might create these policies is that there were questions about board members and social media and they had numerous requests. Since they have not changed the code of ethics, this was one of the ways they could create these policies to help advise board members as to what's appropriate to remind them of the code of ethics, but also how the code of ethics could relate to certain social media situations because they just might not have been contemplated at the time because it hadn't been in existence. Mrs. Sullivan. And then again, I would uh, like the committee to take another look at Mrs. Salabi's. She had two small paragraphs which covered everything in it. Any other board members on, on policy? Oh, Mr. Santilli. I, I just wanted to clarify for the board that um, uh, Mrs. Slaggy's uh, recommendations were shared with the committee. They were discussed and reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't want anyone to think that that wasn't the case. Yeah, um, they, they were there. So um, just so everybody's clear. Go ahead, Mrs. Bill Before. I just think that once, you know, when we, when we as individuals decide that we are going to be on social media, and I think I said this a couple meetings ago, we could take uh, social media and embrace it and make it something positive. Um, we're public figures, and, and listen, I can sit here and tell you that I know my page has been monitored. I know people who have taken things from my page and posted in different places. It, 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 is it fair? Is it, was some of the things they were saying about me true? Some of the things they were saying about me were their opinions. Some of the things they said were rude, disrespectful but at the same time you can't allow anyone to stop you from living your life being on social media somebody is always going to monitor us me as an individual you as an individual and it, it you know it sounds like oh easier said than done when people are saying mean or nasty things about you but that's what they're doing and you know what you know what comes around goes around mm -hmm. you know and and think, you know, you, I always tell people, you know what, you can try to go at every post or try to make a comment. It's not even worth it. Mm -hmm. People right. want to have their opinion about me, about you, about whoever. Do not let anyone stop you from living your life or posting your things. Somebody's going to monitor it. Somebody's going to twist it. Somebody's going to make something out of it that it may not be. It's not fair, but it is, it kind of is what it is. And um, I, that's, you know, that's all I just wanted to say that, and I think we all know that. 
Um, and I tell people when you post things, let your conscience be your guide and know that, you know, somebody's going to like what you say and someone's not going to like it. Mrs. Sullivan. Then I would like to know why I was singled out by board members. Are there any other comments on policy? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we are going to move um, on to a, a couple of items. Uh, the first is um, this past Saturday, the uh, New Jersey School Board Association uh, held our legislative committee meeting. In attendance were uh, uh, myself, uh, Mrs. Bird, and Mr. Ireland. It was a very full agenda, and I'm going to ask Mrs. Bird to give us a quick recap. All right, thank you. Um, we had the pleasure of having Dr. Gleason from the New Jersey Department of Education attend with uh, another one of her colleagues, Diana Pasquale. Most of their presentations were centered around SO1, 2, and 3. Dr. Gleason, um, she is the Assistant Commissioner of Division of Academics and Performance. And she highlighted a lot of what you guys talked about in your presentation today, so that makes it easier. Um, ESSER 1, the grant period was March 13, 2021. Sorry, I hit something. Um, 2, uh, 2022, and CARE Act, CARES Act, aka ESSER 1, were broadly flex, uh, use was broadly flexible funds and to help districts meet the demands that COVID placed on schools. Elementary and secondary school emergency relief, acronym for ESSER. Two, um, that period is now, runs from March 13th to September 30th, 2023. ESSER 2's emphasis is on addressing learning loss, reopening school, and air quality of schools, and can be tied into ESSER 1 funds. Applications for those funds, which you guys are so diligently working on, are due at the end of the month to finalize, and the applications, I already said, can be tied into ESSER 1. So the state must use uh, must allocate 90% of the incoming funds of ESSER 2 based on learning loss, reopening schools, and air quality. In addition to the state's 90% allocation of these funds, 10% can be set aside and um, is set aside into two non-competitive entitlement grants. ESSER 2 includes 10% um, for learning, acceler uh, learning acceleration grant, and that's based on Title I formula. The larger a district's percentage, the larger the allocation. The second portion of the entitlement grants is the mental health grant portion, and it's based on in overall enrollment. The state's earmarking 10% for learning acceleration and mental health, um, sorry, I repeated myself. With the learning acceleration grant, a district is required to use 75% of the allocation towards STEAM, and the DOE mentioned Dr. Gleason specifically mentioned she wants to see a focus on science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And also there's a requirement for 25% of the sub-allocation for literacy and the arts. The mental health grant can be used to support school-based mental health systems that support students and staff. And the DOA is looking for systems that include multiple tiers of support that will allow districts to provide supports that are sustainable after the grants. Dr. Gleason suggested that districts provide a community needs-based assessment to determine the best ways to use these mental health funds. Simultaneously, funds from the American Rescue Plan, Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief, ARP ESSER, ESSER III fund um, is uh, enacted March 11, 2021. This federal funding source provides a total of nearly $122 billion to states and school districts to help safely reopen and sustain the safe operation of schools and address the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Excuse me. On the nation's students. The difference from SR1 and 2 from 3 is that 3 has much more stringent rules and guidance on the permitted use of these funds. State allocation of ARP ESSER funds. The state must subgrant not less than 90% of its total ARP ESSER allocation to local education agencies. 
These funds can be used to reopen schools safely, sustain their safe operation, and address students' social, emotional, mental health, and academic needs resulting from the pandemic. The state must allocate these funds to local educational agencies on the basis of their respective shares of funds received under Title I Part A of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. The ARP ESSER fund includes three state level reservations for activities and interventions that respond to students' academic, social, and emotional needs and address the disproportionate impact of COVID 19 on underrepresented student subgroups. 5% of the total ESSER three allocation for the implementation of evidence based interventions aimed specifically at addressing learning loss, such as summer learning or summer enrichment, extended day comprehensive after school programs, or extended school year programs. 1% of the total ESSER three allocation for, for evidence-based summer enrichment programs is also include, included, and 1% of the total um, allocation for evidence-based comprehensive after-school programs are included. Uh, Dr. Gleason spoke of a readiness checklist that she said would be available from the Department of Education late May, early June, No, you know, kind of an ambiguous <laughs> timeline. She said, we're hoping, cross your fingers, um, she suggested that districts use this not as a black and white yes and no checklist. She said, see it as more of a continuum and to utilize your established committees, such as our, our restart and recovery committees used over the last year to help brainstorm how to maximize the resources to best fit the needs of our community. Um, she stressed that the importance of stakeholder engagement is very important in this process and encourage districts to listen to their stakeholders when distributing these funds. That is the bulk of our meeting. We, we spoke about a lot of le legislative updates. However, I've already reported out on them in last month's report. So um, I hope I got the ESSER 3 stuff right. A B, I don't know. It was a lot, but thank, yeah. Thank you very so much. that report no. I had, mm -hmm. I didn't print that one. So I had that, but uh, thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you very mu much, Ms. Burr. Appreciate that. Um, anything, Pat, uh, Mr. Arnold? Can she reread that? <laughs> I know, right? Just kidding. It was all spot on. Thank you. It was actually a very, very, very important uh, meeting. I love attending those because you get to see at a different level of the downward direction of the mandated policies or how everything plays into what we are discussing today. And we get it a couple of days earlier or a month earlier. So. It, to tie everything together, um, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. I just have to say, my font is 15, and I still can't see it. And when I put my glasses on, they're fogging. So that's why I kept saying, I already read that. Wait, I have to go back. I really can read everyone, I promise. <laughs> I just can't see. <laughs> OK. Um, so turning from New Jersey school boards to Atlanta County school boards, and we will recognize Mr. Del Barca. I'm sure he has some uh, highlights for us. I have reminders again to our board members. Uh, tomorrow, the New Jersey School Board Association uh, begins our education symposium. It's tomorrow and Thursday. So I, I, if you have registered for that, there will be programs both days that will cover all encompassing things that we talk about here uh, if, regarding education in New Jersey. Uh, also, tomorrow night is Atlanta County School Boards Association virtual meeting at 7 o'clock. Uh, the program will include recognition of individual board members for their accomplishments during the past year. Uh, it will probably include exactly the, some of the information that Mrs. Bird just shared with us, because we usually have a legislative report at that time also from the state. Uh, they will be talking about possibly having our county meetings be in person in the fall. Uh, there's a lot of discussion going on at the state level of how we can possibly have the county meetings be in person, but also be a hybrid version to allow for people who would like to be there virtually. So that probably be some more information about that tomorrow night. And the other important item tomorrow night will be the election of new officers for the Atlanta County School Board Association. So all we need is one member from our board to make sure they're there tomorrow night, because that's one member will be the person who will vote for our representative. And each of the uh, 26 School, uh, local school districts in the county will have, hopefully have someone there for the election. So uh, look forward to some more night's meeting. It should be an interesting one, and it's at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. 
Very good, thank you, Mr. Del Barca. One other item before we go to public comment. I think we've, we've scheduled a number of things we talked about. We never had the opportunity uh, with the pandemic to recognize our uh, board members who, who left the board uh, last year. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we do that at our June 29 meeting. If everyone's okay, that gives us plenty of time to get ready and we'll, we'll have a, uh, an award and a recognition for them then, uh, June 29. So with that, we're going to move to uh, we're going to move to public comment. Um, we will start here in the room with anyone who's who's live. Then we will go to our emails. Uh, then we will go to the telephones. Um, three minutes, as you all know, and uh, remember that we cannot comment on personnel or litigation. And it maybe if we have a it may be the case if we have a very complex question that someone may have to get back to you with more information. Mrs. Cruz, very good to see you. Come on down. This one? I didn't get to check it, so I had to slide up. Let's get you all set up. Thank you. Sonia Cruz, 207 Egan Avenue. It's nice to see everyone. Um, I'm coming on behalf of EHT Project Rad. I just wanted to report that we've been working with Mrs. Connor and Scott Miglior in regards to that we will uh, are unable to do a normal, regular Project Rad this year like um, what happened last year. So we have discussed um, adding to the senior picnic. So we're going to add some more food, some fun stations. Um, the kids are also, we've um, committed some money to the, the class to have a souvenir that would say class of 2021. It's kind of a surprise, so they'll see it that day. Um, we are going to continue to support the class of 2021 by running our Senior Smiles campaign again. Um, so that's twofold. So staff, administrators, bus drivers, um, will be asked if they would like to support a student individually. So it's kind of like an adopt a senior. That letter went out today to all staff district wide. Um, as always, we're committed to make sure that every student is matched up. We were very successful last year, and that is our goal again this year to include Eagle and Bridge students also. We um, are also going to have our Project Grad live raffle. So the money that we allotted for prizes will still happen again. We have a group of teachers that we call the prize patrol that would, after the drawing, go ahead and deliver those gifts to the students. Um, we are, Senior Smiles also includes going out to the community and asking them for $5 Walla gift cards that we would put in the bags. Senior parents are sponsoring a senior goodie bag that will be given the day of the Senior Olympics. So we are involved, we are committed to the same amount of money that we did last year. Um, so we want all parents, senior parents, to know that, you know, that these, these students are going to be recognized. Okay? Any questions about senior smiles or anything like that? Can we participate? This Absolutely. Like we did last year? Absolutely. I don't know if the emails go out to you. Cause, uh, so okay. I, if they didn't, then I'll make sure I'll push it. But definitely, please. It was, it was um, a real uh, pleasure to do it last year. Yeah, it was fun. We have great pictures, and it, it you know, it really is nice to see like your kindergarten teacher come and like surprise you and support you. So it is a really nice thing. Um, we we will take pictures. Um, we will be not we, nobody in um, Project Gra Grad staff. Well, you know, our volunteers will have access to addresses. It's strictly through the school district just to protect everybody's safety. Okay. And then I do have a couple questions about the other stuff that we talked about today. Um, is kindergarten not included in this the summer program expansion? Like, are kindergartners not getting any? Kindergarten, no, it's not included. And, and why? Just wondering. Um, I guess it's based on need and data that we have. Um, there's a lot of different variables that go into that. Um, okay. But you know, our main focus this year was going to be for our current first through um, eighth grade and then focus on ninth through twelfth as well. Okay, thank you. And then, um, Mrs. Floyd, I'm glad that you said what you said. It's nice to see that we're moving forward 
as far as with the schools and stuff like that. But we have to keep in mind that we are a community. So it's still EHT, you know, I agree with you. You know, sometimes Davenport just doesn't, you know, feel like they're part of that community. And I'm a strong Davenport person, a big cheerleader for Davenport. That's my side of the community. I live on that side of the block of the neighborhood. But I think it's really important that we stress to everybody that we are still a school district that encompasses everybody pre-K through 12 and you know it's important you know I think we do in the two schools that means the parents club is going to change a little bit too because now it's going to be one building so I'm sure we'll have a discussion about that the other thing I wanted to say is that as we move forward and I haven't been around a lot because I have my own freshman that you know she had the same problems in college she didn't get to experience a lot of things that she normally would so she got you know not a good senior year and not a great freshman year. But anyway, as we move forward, it's important that we let the community know what's happening. I think it's really important. We're kind of like, there's different, everybody has different opinions, but we need to kind of come together because at the end of the day, it's for the kids. So we have to show the kids as, as adults, we're working together, the teachers, the bus drivers, everybody's working together. I know I reached out to, for a client, I reached out about lunch is being dropped off because my family couldn't get there I had a family that could not get there the next day the food was dropped off right at the porch and I was so thankful that shows that you're listening to them so I hope there's a plan Dr. Grucio because you're all about community I hope there's a plan to let the community know what the process is because September is around the corner and we want kids to feel positive about September thank you Thank you very much, Mrs. Cruz. We appreciate all that you do. Very much appreciated. And we're looking forward to uh, uh, Don't a great end of the year uh, season. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm being. Don't we usually give a donation? Can, yeah, could you? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Could you use the microphone, please? Don't we usually give them a donation as a bore? Well, you didn't ask. You didn't For ask. project graduation, we do. You didn't uh, ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so hold so on. I'm going to tell you why I did not ask. I'll be honest with you. I didn't ask last year because you guys did an amazing job last year by donating those yearbooks. Like, that was like. That was a dream and that happened. So I didn't ask this year. But we are asking for donations from other, um, you know, businesses that might be able to support us. Um, so yes, of course, I'm always going to ask for money. Okay. You know, sign. Yeah. We'll work for food. But here, um, yes, I would like a donation um, for Project Grad. Um, Municipal Alliance is going to donate, hopefully donate to us too. And there's a few individuals in the community that have already reached out to us and say, we're still going to support you. So thank you. Well, we're definitely interested in doing that. I, you know, I know I didn't see it this year, so um, I figured there was a method to it. So. Why don't you go ahead, and Mrs. Cruz, I'll ask you, um, you know, get in touch with either Mrs. Nye or Dr. Gruccio. Let us know how we can help, what we can do, and we'll do our, we'll do our best as we always do. All right, thank you. Anyone else here? Mr. Gunther, very good to see you. Hello. Matt Gunther, 24 High School Drive. I just wanted to remind everyone that this Friday and this Saturday are the live streams, live recorded streams of Les Miserables starting at 7. If you did not get to see the musical when we filmed it over spring break, you absolutely must carve out three hours to see that this weekend. You will be so super impressed with the work that these young people have done. It is probably the most fine production that I have ever worked with in my 20 plus years of working with the theater almost 29 years here in the district. Thank you. Thank you. It was fantastic. So, so wonderful to see. Anyone else? Mrs. Connor? No? Well, all right. I just figured, we, you know, we cover everyone who's here. Uh, <laughs> you're always welcome. All right. So, do we have email questions? We do not have email questions this week. Okay, so we will go to our phone lines.
checking to see if it was streaming. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah, check it. Our community has been watching at home, and I think they're uh, very pleased with what they've seen, so they're not calling in. Sure. No comment. I got to talk about that. I'm tired of it. It's been up for 52 Oops. seconds. Uh, Pete, did you just get yours up? I will wait another 30 Thanks. seconds just in case they have a meeting. Uh, internet issue. That's fine. We'll wait. Well, I have a meeting at 4 I think it's the internet in, in this building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for a moment. That's okay. I'll we'll wait another 30 seconds just in case somebody's on the road and they may have been delayed as well. That's true. Okay. All right. We are good. Um, yeah, we answered that that question perfectly. So, okay. All right. So now, board members, comments from board members. Anyone? Mrs. Bird. Um, I think I really hope we can get kindergarten on the summer school schedule. I missed that. Thank you, Miss Cruz. Um, I understand it's a logistics nightmare what you're dealing with, but that's all asking an awful lot of our first grade teachers to bring in kids who probably are lacking a lot of developmental skill or foundational reading, foundational math, foundational writing skills that they attain in kindergarten. Um, I hope that we can somehow at least carve out the ones who are really struggling and fit them in somehow. Um, without a strong foundation, it doesn't matter what's built afterward, in my opinion. Miss Miss Alibar. I have to agree with Christy on this one. Excuse me, Miss Bird, on this one because um, without a strong foundation, foundation, the building's going to fall, and we all know that. Um, so I wouldn't say all kindergartners need to come in, but definitely the, the kindergarten students that are struggling that maybe didn't thrive during the time that um, school was virtual. Um, but what I want to say is thank you to all the, the, the teachers and the staff. And as a teacher myself, I know it's been a long year and a half. And I mean, the teachers my children have personally are all fantastic. They have been great with communicating with me. Um, I'm a bit of a helicopter mom, but you know, I guess it works because you know it was a good day in the Alabarda household yesterday. One of the twins got a National Junior Honor Society letter. The other one got Student of the Month. So, and it, it, without the teachers being on top of them and communicating with me, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So I just. I know how much, how hard everyone is working this year, and I re really, really thank everyone. Um, I did notice people asking, and um, it was something I'm, I'm interested in too. Um, last year, due to COVID, 
Um, the eighth graders did not get their National Junior Honor Society um, awards. Um, I mean, they, they got them sent home, but you know, they didn't get like a, a presentation. And I'm sure there's other um, groups maybe that did not get the same thing. And I was wondering if there's any way to give, although the students got their certificates and pins and whatever, is there any way to give the students this um, experience that they missed? Because, you know, it, it, it's a great honor. And these students have worked hard, and, and I just feel that they deserve it. Thank you. Mr. Del Marca. I'm going to agree about the kindergarten uh, experience this summer. Um, we worked so hard to get full day kindergarten into our school system, and we achieved that, even though that during this past year, I know they experienced that abbreviated days and uh, the vir virtual experience for kindergarten. But I, we all know that there are going to be students who have serious delays, and we should be looking at those students at least to see if we can help them uh, begin first grade successfully next year. Because I think the I know it's going to be a struggle and another challenge for you folks, and you've done such a great job so far, but if there's a way that we could possibly include those students who really have some concerns uh, this summer, that would be a nice bonus for all of us, and I think especially for the students. Possibly a conversation for your next curriculum? See what you guys can you know, work on. Other board members? Uh, I have something. Yes. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Ms. Cruz, it's nice to see you. And of course, I'm always available to support the project graduation, as you know. It's probably one of the most fun events to participate in. And I'll be happy when someday we're back at the high school overnight like we were a few years ago. So. Also, I wanted to mention that um, I think it was nice to see all the athletes come in tonight. Mm -hmm. I think it was a, a great presentation, and it was, it was nice to see some positive things going on as we come out of this COVID pandemic. Um, so I, I just wanted to mention that. And I also wanted to mention I'm looking forward to the retirement celebration for the teachers that, that's coming up um, next week, uh, next Thursday, May 20th. So I did reserve my spot, so I'm looking forward to that. So. Um, that's all I have. Again, thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Good night. Any other board members? Just, I want to see if anyone who hasn't gone, and then I'll go back to, okay, Miss Alvar. I don't see any others. I'm sorry, I totally forgot. I went to watch Lady Miss Surround, and it was amazing. I just wanted to let you know that everyone did such a fantastic job. I cried, I laughed, I cried a little bit more. You know, it, for high school students, it was incredible. So I'm hopefully going to get to watch them um, at least one of the nights, you know, it streamed again. It was so wonderful. I really encourage everyone to watch it because these students did an incredible job and as well as the, the staff that worked with them. And I also wanted to thank everyone for um, the support with the crew flower sale. It was a big success. and. Um, you know, I, I thank you. You know, my kids are all going to be involved with the crew for the next however many years. So, thank you. Ms. Cooper Boyd. So, I was just thinking of um, sitting here and listening to everyone um, giving thank yous and, and different things of that nature. And um, when Ms. Alvarez was thanking um, teachers, I'm going to also thank the teachers for all that they've done, but i also like to thank the teachers. I was thinking about custodians, cafeteria workers, um, bus drivers, you name it. I know I'm probably leaving somebody else. The school nurses, Wednesday is school nurses day. Tomorrow, right? Yep. And also, I, I also want to, you know, the like secretary is, you know, because I start naming, and I already did, and I want to forget someone, but all staff members in the A. Carver County School District. But I do want to give a shout out to the building administrators. And, and just like Ms. Alvarez said, as her being a teacher, she understands the hard work that goes into it. And, and myself being a, a, a building-based administrator, 
give them a thank you too because sometimes they you know they're kind of not intentionally but it's kind of like how you forget about mom sometimes because she just mom just does what she does you know your clothes just magically appear or food and magically appears on the table and I know that it's a it takes a lot of work to to run a school and to run a district and of course thanks to the administrative team but just to thank everyone because this is a I know this is a team effort um, to run a well oil machine like Egg Harbor Township and I've always said we're not a perfect district we have work to do too but we are a um, I do believe we're a flagship district and we're on our way and we're, we're we have those tough conversations about things that do work I mean that don't work or need work and that's how you create a well oil machine so thank you anyone else Okay, seeing none, uh, just want to remind board members, hand in your questionnaires to, to uh, Ms. Anaya on, on your way out, and uh, I'll, I'll see if uh, uh, administration has any final uh, remarks. Um, I do want to point out from our legislative committee meeting, and uh, we, we mentioned this also in our legislative testimony in the spring, uh, chapter 44 has um, posed a challenge to many districts, posing a challenge to our district. It's going to add some significant cost in next year's budget. And uh, I, I'd like to uh, uh, recommend that we consider a resolution next week, um, school boards. Uh, has a, uh, a model resolution uh, asking the legislature to take a look at look at it again. Uh, it was promised to save everyone money, um, and I'm not convinced from all that I'm hearing and reading that it's that it's doing that. So why don't we, uh, if, if everyone's amenable to that, uh, I think we need to to request that that be looked at again. So other than that, I'm going to see uh, if administration has any closing uh, thoughts or comments. No, just um, everybody have a great week. Um, acknowledge our nurses. We will be doing that uh, district-wide tomorrow. So happy Nurses Day. And thank you all for your continued support. Have a great night. Okay, guys. May I have a motion, please? So made. Second. <laughs> motion is second. Hands are raised. Everyone have a very good evening. We'll see you next week.